Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Control, this is episode 20. So last time we went down into the pit and really dealt with the mold, going all the way down to fight Mold 1. Now we just have a few more missions to wrap up, and an expedition to go on, but before we get to that, I was told uh, an episode or two ago about a easter egg that I may have missed and wanted to see, which is on the fifth floor of the Panopticon. They said it was to the left of facing the swan, so I assume it's that room there, which I might have ignored thinking it was just part of this hallway. So to get there, we'll just fly on over and slam down. All right, so we got an ability point, which means this is the right place. They said to check out the items that were contained here, except all the doors seem to be closed. What do we got here? Well, that would be Alan Wake. Ends and reality begins. Here, they're all the same. It's a hideous trap. My every thought made real. Fear, desire. How can I ever know for sure I've escaped and not just lost in my own fantasy of it? That thought alone can drive you insane. I like that they even had a little bit of the musical note from Alan Wake. So yeah, that's a pretty significant easter egg, you can see why it was recommended. Also interesting, because again, Darling and Wake have the exact same voice actor, but you can kind of not tell exactly that they sound the same. You know, Wake has a, a definitely different way of speaking than Darling. Typewritten page procedures. I feel like we got some mention of this page before. A standard letter-sized typewritten page with minor water damage. The page is full of text, but apart from the top seven lines, all the rest has been violently scratched out. Only a few individual words and phrases can be made out. The page emits a dim glow in the dark. When the text is read, there is a feeling of dislocation, as if witnessing the page being written as you read it, and as if reality around you is being redacted to match the words on the page. This feeling is made st stronger if the text is redacted. Forensic and linguistic analysis confirmed that the text has been written by Alan Wake with the same typewriter as the earlier materials discovered in Bright Falls in 2010. So yeah, at some point I guess Wake is going to appear, probably I guess in the, the second DLC, which is just called AWE, but the kind of like preview image for it is straight up just taken from like the cover of Alan Wake, combined with control in the lower part of the image. And then there's one of the thermoses from Alan Wake, the collectible that doesn't actually do anything at all in the game. Which, I think we also got a note about these before. So yeah, that's a cool easter egg and I'm glad it was recommended. Alright, so I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of those rogue mold, because that seems like a pretty straightforward mission, unless something else comes up. I kind of hope there's more to this though, because it seems like why would she give us that after going through the whole process of the actual, you know, dealing with the real mold. So if I wanted to farm remote thoughts, I would probably want to fight those guys up there, but don't really need them right now. Also, weird thing, I don't know if this was because of a bug or not, but... So, when I did the grinding to upgrade Pierce, I also upgraded Charge to level 2, and then there was no option to upgrade it to level 3. And apparently there was a bug that a lot of people had where certain weapons would just not give you the option to upgrade them, even when you are at the point where they should be. But uh, after I beat Mold 1, this popped up, so I don't know if that was just because I didn't have an untapped potential or what, but it didn't even show up in this list. Alright, so let's fast travel to... Research. Um, I guess we'll go to Parapsychology first. So yeah, this sounds like it's just a another version of the mission where we had to hunt down the rangers. I don't know if we're going to get, like, named mold here. Alright, uh, Parapsychology is this way. We should be just, like, in here, right? Yeah. 
I mean, if it says it's in parapsychology, it has to be somewhere in the room. Oh, there's a note here. Precognitive powers. Nadine, send this to research for analysis regarding my precognitive powers. Urgent, Dr. Darling. Last night, I had a dream. In the dream, I was given the solution to a staffing problem I'd been presented with just yesterday. The problem is of a confidential nature and must therefore remain unclarified here, but I can assure you that the method through which I received this helpful information was undeniably paranatural. I can only draw the conclusion that I possess exceptional precognitive abilities and as such, offer my services to the Bureau's research teams. We must utilize my powers for the greater good. Signed, Mr. Francis Bertram. Okay. I wonder if that's a common occurrence in the uh, Bureau. People suddenly thinking they have powers. Okay, well here's mold growth. That wasn't here before, so... Where does that lead us? Well, that's certainly some mold. Yep. Correct, Jesse. That was one of those mold hosts. That was a chest back here. Um, so... I can't slam through that window. I guess we'll go back here and see if there's another one. I don't know if that patch just indicated that there's one mold host there. Hmm. I guess this is also part of parapsychology. Just spam him with objects. Well, I don't see any mold down here. Just regular guys. Oh no, this was the same room. We were just lower down. What is going on with that light? Talk about paranatural. Okay. Okay, like, I don't know what was happening there. I was somehow firing over his head, even though he's right in front of me. Are you gonna... Come around that corner? Okay, so we found one mold host, but it looks like there's probably three. So are they in here, if they weren't all up there? Oh, yeah, the mold is leading in here. So I guess this is part of parapsychology? Well, that's just a full-on growth there. Okay, is there going to be another one in here? Nope. Looks like we're really going to have to do a run around to find all these guys. Shouldn't we, like, call somebody in to set the stuff on fire? Now that we've cleared out the danger part. Is there another one in here? Nope. Okay, well we got those ones, we got the ones upstairs, so... Where would the other mold be? I don't know if the part downstairs is part of psycho or parapsychology. The If we go down the elevator? Okay, I see some up there, so that's probably where it is. How do we get there? That connects into the Astral Exhibition. What department is that? That's parakinesiology? Definitely not as straightforward as I had hoped. Okay. We should be able to cut through here. I just forget how to get out of this room. Like, I guess that astral spike is still contained, but 
the hallway that connects the two rooms does not seem to be there anymore. There's just this door, which goes back out the way I came, right? Well, not exactly where I came, but almost. I mean, yes, I could go all the way back and go around from the other side, but I shouldn't have to. Okay, that door just connects to that door. Yeah, I guess it's just that window that's connected. Oh, or we can go through here. There we go. Found our way through. Okay, so it should be in here and then through here. All right be one more mold host in this room somewhere. There he is. Alright. It's all the ones in parapsychology. So yeah, I guess it's a little bit of a, a clue hunt to find these guys. It's like, oh, look for the mold and then try to figure out where it's leading you. Okay. Should be able to get the central research through here. Now this room could be a real pain in the ass to find all these guys. One of them up here. Okay, it looks like there's still only three though, which is good. I, think I just heard one. Okay, nothing up here. Hopefully not connecting into the Hedron room. Nobody in here. I mean, this room's really big, but it's not that many different actual places to go. It's mostly just the, the big open central chamber. Guess we start from the bottom. There's probably one in the bathroom. That seems like a safe bet. Based on the general dispersion, I would say that there's probably one more kind of in the middle. Unless there's one in the cafeteria. Maybe these guys will kill it for me, since they spawned in as well. Um, let's see. They're shooting at something, and I don't think it's me. Maybe we just follow the gunshots? And okay, now I've got snipers on me. Where from? Down there. Maybe they were shooting at me, I can't really tell. Oh, well I shot him, but I also hit the railing. Oh shit. You know, I really didn't want to deal with these guys while looking for the mold. I feel like I need a closer look at those snipers, because they have some kind of really weird, like, giant red scope. Here comes more. There's always a huge amount of spawns in this room. Is that everybody? I think we got them all. The music's still going though, so maybe not.
Ow. I want to get a close look at this guy. Yeah, like, what the hell is this thing attached to the top of the scope? It's clearly not something you look through. It's just like a big flashlight type thing. I'm sure it does something to paranatural enemies. But it's also presumably why they project a beam of light when they're trying to snipe you. Okay, so no mold down here. Guess we'll just kind of work up towards the top floor. There's a lot of little rooms tucked away that you have to levitate to, but I don't think they'll be in there if we already had to do that for one of them. Darling's room. Doesn't look like there's any in here. Dimensional research. Mm, doesn't look like there's any leading there. I feel like if it was through any of these hallways, we would have at least a... You know, little trail of it leading off. It's not in these bathrooms. I'd be really annoyed if it ended up being down in the pit. If they're just like, hey, it's actually down here after all. Right in the spot where it came from. Okay, there's a room up there we could actually get to. Oh, yeah, there's the mold there. I guess they are hidden upstairs. Well, the mold was up there, but I didn't actually see a host. Be funny if I actually triggered it you know, activated it, and then it walked off the ledge and is now down at the bottom somewhere. Because the mold is just, like, here. There's more over here. But it's also not here. That's kind of weird. I feel like it's supposed to be up here, because why would there be all this mold otherwise? Or maybe that mold was already there. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I came up here. Mm. Doesn't look like it's up here either. Yeah, I think these rooms are already sealed off with mold in front of them. Well, where would that leave? I guess it can't be in the Hedron room because there are actually people in there. This one might be another, like, off-screen one, just to chase down the rest of them. And look, see what I mean about respawns? I've been in this room long enough now that they have just respawned. Could check in the shelter, but I feel like, again, if it was in here, we would see something on the outside. Now, there's mold by this door, so maybe it is actually just down these stairs. Oh, yeah, there he is right there. Didn't I just walk in here? Alright, and then just Ritual Division. So maybe we can finish this in this episode. I didn't think this would take so long, though. Uh, we still gotta deal with Tomasi as well. I don't need to kill you, but I choose to. Alright, where's that control point? I don't really want to fight the rest of these guys, though. But I guess it will now that they're almost dead. Alright. It might actually be faster to just walk to Ritual Division, because either way I have to go up to get to the control point. 
And I think Ritual Division is just up here. Past this floor. Oh no, the door to Ritual Division is actually blocked off. Forgot about that. So we'll go through here. Oh, come on with the respawns. Have I not killed enough of you yet? Alright. So we go to Ritual Division. Hopefully these ones are straightforward because, again, I thought this would be like a quick 10 minute thing at most. Okay, Ritual Division is a very tall room. Let's check if there's any in here. Doesn't look like there's any in here. Good. So there's probably some up top. Looks like there's some in the Ritual Office. Which is a little place upstairs. I guess I'll disable Pierce for the moment. I find that scatter, or I keep calling it scatter, shatter is actually not that good at this point in the game. That it was only kind of good when we first got it, because it really just seems like, even at point-blank range, half of the projectiles miss. So what should be a one-shot kill ends up being like three shots to the chest. Okay, there's that one. Could be one in here. I'm still wondering how exactly they managed to get out of the pit. Because the only way out is through the elevator, and I don't think they're smart enough to use an elevator. I think this is part of Ritual Division as well. Easy enough. And I don't see another mold spot there, so let's head back. I feel like there's got to be one up top, though. No, oh, there's more mold here, so maybe not. Synchronicity Lab, where is your mold host? Probably up here. I think that's the last one. Alright, well. Let under hell know. I guess that's it. It's gonna be pretty disappointing if I go talk to her and she's just like, oh, thanks, Jesse, that's all. It seems like such a pointless mission. So active threshold, but at least we got that mission out of the way. Once we turn this in, we'll go deal with Tomasi, who I imagine is going to be fairly difficult, considering when he shows up in the game. Or re-shows up, I guess. Now, is this the way out? It is. All right, Underhill. Now what? I found the hosts. They won't be spreading any more mold. Well done. I'll send burn teams to sanitize the locations. I'm beginning to wonder if these hosts are originating outside the threshold in independent patches of mold growth. You don't sound very optimistic. Please don't tell me you're going to make me track down is for farmers, as all of the mold said. spots. I suppose you could now return to that hiss business you all seem okay, so good. concerned about. This woman has some incredible tunnel vision. So that really was it. It was just a stupid little mission she gave me after doing I'll the real mission. Dr. Underhill, if you please. Alright, well. I guess now we have fully wrapped up the mold story. So, Tomasi is in containment, I think. I don't know where in containment, but... 
Oh yeah, he's actually by the turntable, I remember now. I had to avoid that area while I was grinding so that I wouldn't accidentally set him off. And I was trying to get the materials for my sniper upgrade. Alright, well we've got almost everything unlocked. So... Six, seven more ability points, and we'll have the tree completely filled out. Which... Means that you don't really have to do that much grinding to fill it out. So, one thing I'm curious about is, next to the turntable, there's that room still that is just question marks, and I wonder if he's going to, like, retreat into there. Because otherwise, I don't know any way to get into that room. I think it's completely blocked right now. And nothing would be more annoying than having one spot on the map that you actually just can't access yet. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a hint for a DLC that's not out yet. Alright, Tomasi, where are you at? Well, that's the room right there, so <laughs> I guess it is actually open. The Sterling AWE. There's a big-ass rock in here. Yep. There you are. So I imagine he's going to be pretty tough if he has his own fancy health bar. Or not. I mean, he is just a, a hover hiss, so his main moves are going to be throwing shit at me. And probably spawning enemies. So what's up with this meteor? I assume it's a meteor, I'm not just a rock. That's how you deal with these guys. It works on the normal ones, and I guess it works on him too. You just spam them with objects so that their dodge has to reset. Ow. Honestly though, I think Mold 1 was probably a harder boss than him, so this shouldn't take too long. He was our first boss hiss that we fought. Oh man, okay, I'm... I'm kind of killing myself with, uh, fall damage. And those guys don't give you a lot of health. Yeah, he seems fairly standard in his moveset. I don't even think he looks that different from, like, the <laughs> the regular flying hiss. He looks very unconcerned about his situation. It's like, oh, Jesse, just leave me alone. You know, oh, okay, distorted. Way to come in and make things hard. Now I'm panic throwing. I don't know where Tomasi went. I was gonna say, I wonder if that rock has some relevance to Hedron, considering the general shape. Alright, that gave me a lot of health. Grab this stuff. Okay, thankfully, Tomasi actually despawned while that was happening. Suddenly, the difficulty comes in when he spawns a whole lot of enemies. Yep. Alright. So, I guess we'll just kind of cut out the first half of that fight, because it's pretty straightforward. You just pelt him with shit. And I think we will switch back to Pierce for this fight. So that we can really quickly chip away at him while also clearing out the adds. Alright, well now I've got a Distorted on my side. I'm not sure that's going to help me much, considering she's just going to disappear. Did 
definitely take out all the exploders first. Ow, that was a shotgun blast to the face. Alright, he's almost done, but I can't take more than like two hits from him. Should probably get a guy like this on my side so that he'll actually shoot at Tomasi. Because obviously the distorted can't do anything to a flying enemy. Almost done. Shit. See, I'm so used to kind of ignoring these guys throwing shit at you that I wasn't really dodging some of his attacks. I guess the Bureau should start looking for a new head of communications. Yeah, who are we gonna make head of communications? We are kind of out of named characters to give promotions to. Hey, Arish, you want to give up your job and become head of communications? Alright, so is there anything around here we can actually grab? I feel like we haven't heard much about this particular AWE. There's a radio here. There's a note here. Sterling Summary. AWE-46. A paranatural object appeared in a field outside of town of Sterling, Colorado, near a billboard advertising redacted. No civilians were injured, though a family dog has been reported as missing since the event. Local authorities arrived on the scene and began issuing orders over a monitored line of communication, using several watchwords flagged by the Bureau, concluding redacted. Bureau agents from the regional office were dispatched and arrived two hours after local police. The situation was contained and analysis began. Bureau research staff arrived the next day and examined the object. After a redacted days of evaluation, the object was lifted into an enclosed truck with built-in black rock panels and relocated to Bureau headquarters via the subway transit system leading into the oldest house. But what actually happened? Was anything important? happening in this particular AWE, or is just a mysterious rock appeared? And we must analyze it. But yeah, it does look like Hedron. Okay, there's like a control room down here, so I wonder if we can get in there somehow. I was like, what is this? But this is just something that broke off the ceiling when I was throwing shit around. I mean, there's a chest over here. So yeah, now we've pretty much wrapped up all of the side missions. We'll go back and have a chat with Emily, because we didn't actually talk to her about her post-game options, and maybe we'll pop in and see Ati, see if he came back from his vacation yet. And I guess we'll save the expedition thing for next time. That way we can do more than just one. Okay, we got some more correspondence here. Sterling Supplement. Local witnesses reported a bright flash in the field and approximately redacted. No noise accompanied the light. Authorities had assumed the object fell from the sky, but our examination found the object actually manifested there vaporizing the soil around it in an intense spherical redacted redacted, which possibly explains the light seen from town. The object is a hollow sphere made of a stone-like material. Structural analysis of the material does not redacted on record. The sphere has a broken portion, as if something redacted from the object. The object has been inactive since arriving at the Bureau. The communications department officially stated to the press that the object was a small meteor, while also using the America Overnight program to redact it. 
Note, this AWE will be studied in the containment sector until the spherical object is deemed safe to be transferred to the investigation sector. So, was it a sphere? Was it originally a sphere, and then they broke pieces off, or what? <laughs> Oh, right, because I used all my remote thoughts, so it was marked as new again. You're listening to America Overnight, now in our 29th year, lifting the veil between fiction and reality. Thank you for staying up with us. I've been getting a lot of calls about this meteor in Sterling, Colorado. There are reports of a large spherical <laughs> Crash landed in a field outside town. Some government people reportedly took it away. Now, we happen to broadcast from Colorado, and Sterling isn't far. I drove down myself to check it out with members of the America Overnight team. And it was totally it was nothing. It wasn't long before we found pieces of metal debris scattered in the Or I guess he's gonna make it sound like a UFO. This is yet another instance yep, that's their cover story. flying object or UFO entering our airspace and crashing. That the government took away the evidence under cover of darkness only compounds the fact that these are more than likely visitors from beyond our planet, or dare I say, solar system. Head on over to our website to see pictures of the spacecraft pieces we uncovered. And while you're doing that, our sponsors would like your ear. America Overnight will be right back. Were they just like... Hey, what's a really ridiculous thing that'll make people scoff at this whole story? Uh, aliens? Yeah, but we've done that one so many times. Okay, so now we just need to go back to... Executive. Speak with Emily. And, uh, wrap up, pretty much. So yeah, definitely not the most exciting last two missions to finish on. I think that Mold 1 mission was pretty much a good point to stop at, so it's a shame we didn't do that one last, but I guess we couldn't have because she gave us that Mold mission afterwards. I do wish we actually had a mission that unlocked in the epilogue, though because all of those missions we could have done before doing the final boss. Where are the files on parasitic entities I asked for? I took care of the Tomasi problem. Sorry, I forget he was a co-worker. Don't apologize. That wasn't the real Tomasi. Also, I didn't like him he very died much. when the hiss got him. You're right. I just didn't want to be insensitive. Sentimentality is a weakness in situations like these, Jesse. That's Bureau 101. I don't think Emily's in danger of being called sentimental. That's why I'm basically a robot, Jesse. All right. So, Jesse as director. How do you feel about me taking over as director? You act like it just happened. Right? You've been director since we first met, remember? I am still thrilled. Nothing's changed. Not for me. But the Bureau has changed. Trench and Darling are gone. Their knowledge, anything not written down, disappeared with them. They knew the Bureau better than anyone. Luckily for us, They're Darling the wrote a lot of stuff down. We won't operate like they did. We'll learn from their mistakes. We'll be better than they ever were. Also, another... We won't ever be like them. A little loose end that never really got tied up is, who is inside the NSC? Though I do actually know the answer to that, but it's never really presented that much in-game. It's apparently only hinted at. When the hiss got into my head, I saw some weird things. I think Darling even spoke to me. And he danced? Does that make any sense to you? Well, empirically, no. But phantom voices as well as hallucinatory states are not uncommon here. And considering the forces that Dr. Darling was working with, he could have been transferred to a different plane of consciousness. Physically or otherwise. And that doesn't upset you? Oh, very. And the fact that he hid those forces from me? It's infuriating. But Darling's dream was always to look beyond our reality. This time he may have taken a step too far. 
But as long as his consciousness can perceive his surroundings, I'm sure he's loving it. Maybe Darling was just trying to protect you from the darker side of his work. Or maybe he wanted you to be the backup in case he died horribly. I'm not a child. Like, don't just assume I'm going to consider something morally repugnant. Which it all was. Which it all was, of course. That's pretty much the impression I got, was that he kept her off of the whole slide projector thing in case that he died, <laughs> that something bad came out of it, so that she could become the head of research. How was Dylan? The same. I, I can't detect any his activity, but his physiology has certainly been altered by it. And I can't tell if his brain activity is genuine or simply the aftermath of the hiss, like spasms. Dylan could wake up tomorrow for all I know. I really can't say. Then I just have to wait for him. I mean, the first person that we tried to That's remove fair. the hiss from, they, they didn't go into a coma, they just flat out died. So clearly he's an improvement over that. We'll be monitoring him around the clock. If he wakes up, we'll be ready. I don't mean that in a hostile way, just... Well, you know. I hear you. My brother isn't exactly popular around here. I hope one day he'll have the chance to change that. Also... I mean, I guess Darling never died, because he was locked into the Hedron chamber, you know. They said that he took the big Hedron device, the thing we pulled off of the door, and locked himself away. So, presumably he, like, passed on to another realm of reality or something while he was in there, and absorbing the Hedron resonance. So, there was a moment after Hedron died, that I couldn't feel my powers. The hiss got into my head. Just for a moment. So that explains the HRA outage. Before we knew what was happening, the hiss had us. Oh, so they actually did go down. They were in my head. I saw terrible things. I mean, I was about to go under forever when the hiss was pushed back. The HRAs had come back on. Dylan vanished afterwards, and we fought off the hiss that came after him. So if Hedron's death knocked out the HRAs, that means there must be a new local source for them to relay. Which, I'm guessing, must be... Me. Jesse Polaris. You. Hedron is dead, assuming that word even applies to a resonant-based life form. But whatever it awakened in you, the power you call Polaris, is still active. Or at least, that's what my instruments are telling me. I don't think we're ever going to understand all of this. And I'm okay with that. I'm just glad you're here with me. That's good to know. Thanks, Emily. I feel like you can't really call Hedron a resonance-based entity, though, because it generated resonance, but it had a physical body, unlike the Hiss. I found Dylan attacking the astral plane and the board. What was he hoping to accomplish? Huh. Since they arrived, Hiss have been corrupting objects of power, which have an inherent link to the astral plane. Maybe their goal was to access the astral plane, and the board itself. I mean, we've been kind of hearing that the whole game. That still doesn't from various tell us sources well. that they were trying to get to the His board. His motives are a difficult thing to work out, but I have been digging through confidential files and noticed a strange gap in knowledge regarding the board. Looks like any data on them has either been deleted or was never gathered in the first place. Then maybe it's time someone looked into that. Maybe it is. Maybe somebody inside the Bureau has been deleting all information on the board. Well, I've got a Bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. All right. Please, Emily. Not even as a joke. So, is Dylan over here? I want to check Marshall's in. Coming back. It's not like her to be absent during a crisis. Marshall's as tough as they come. You don't need to worry about her. She'll show up again. In the first DLC. I'll be here waiting for you when you wake up, brother. He's back in his resonant box, which I guess didn't if actually you wake up. do anything to prevent him from leaving. 
But yeah, I guess with Dylan, the Hiss were trying to be a little more subtle to find a way to get to Jesse so that she could open up the Hedron Chamber, which is why they sent him out as like a little bit of a Trojan horse. You heard the director stop the Hiss, right? Sounds like she can really handle things. Finally, someone had the balls to take the fight to them. It's about time we had someone other than an old man at the helm. Aw, shucks. Actually, I agree. Thanks, guys. Beaten the hiss over and over. Darling is really gone. They, they I mean, Trench probably didn't have nearly as many powers as we do. Alright, so let's uh, pop down to maintenance and then we'll wrap up the episode here. Just go see if Ati is back from his little trip. I'm going to say he's probably not. Also, this is just a random thing, but... There was one part during Trench's ramblings at the end there, where he was talking about, you know, he's mentioned the plumber and stuffing a fish in there to prevent the waste from leaking out. And it kind of sounds like he was just describing potentially Ati putting Hedron there to keep the hiss out. Because, you know, he was talking about the old man who put a fish in there, but the man old man was also an old god. And he, the fish was blugging up the pipes so that the, the waste couldn't overflow and leak out. That sounds like it could kind of apply to the hiss and Hedron. So I thought that was interesting. We really don't know how, you know, important Asi is to the way everything runs here. Or if he even works for the board or is his own entity. Ati's still gone. We get the feeling he had more of an agenda than he let on. Did he already get what he was here for? He's gone back to his sea god job. That's one thing also that you guys kind of missed out on when I was doing the grinding. Now that we're in the post game, Jesse kind of has something to say every time you go to a main area. Oh yeah, so also the NSC, the power plant. Apparently, NSC stands for Northmore Sarcophagus Containment. Meaning that the person inside of the sarcophagus, you know, the power plant, is Northmore, the previous director before Trench. And that the power plant that generates all of the Bureau's power is sucking power off of him. Meaning he must be extremely powerful. But yeah, apparently that's just kind of hinted at through various, not even like notes directly, but like half mentions in notes. I mean, they never actually say why Trench replaced him. Itching for some real action. Is that an accent? All right, so I guess that'll do it for episode 20 of Let's Play Control. Next time will probably be actually our last one until March, because next time we're going to go on an expedition and see if we can at least complete one before we uninstall Control for a while. But until then, I've been Shadefire, and I thank you again for joining me on my journey through the Federal Bureau of Control. Take care, everyone. <laughs>